I rolled my shoulder and rubbed the ointment onto my skin. My sore muscles go from cold to hot as the chemicals take effect. I sat on the edge of my bed shirtless, working the medicine into my skin and feeling the tingle travel over the spot. Then I hear it. It's a distant sound, but it's all too clear. Just out the window, I hear the sound of rattling chains. A bead of sweat appears on my forehead, as the sound jumps around my room, bounding off of the walls and into my ear canal and beating against my eardrums. I stand from my bed and move to the window, pulling the curtains open. My neighbor stands on his porch, sipping a cup of what I can only assume is coffee, newspaper tucked under his arm. He raises the other and gives a weak wave. I can see the bags under his eyes even from where I'm standing, and the groggy, almost drunken wave he gives me lets me know that Bob is not a morning person. I wave back nervously. I can hear the chains, but I can't see them. They sound almost like they're coming from the inside of Bob's house, but from his reaction, I know that he can't hear them. Cars drive past my window and Bob walks into his house over the sound of blowing wind and chirping birds. I can still hear the chains. I pull the curtains closed, my eyes shutting with them, shake my head and count to five. I take a deep breath and as I exhale the sound of the chains slowly fade away. I've been hearing them for a few weeks now, the chains. The maddening rattle of steel on steel. It started off subtle at first. As I drove home from work, maybe I'd hear the clink of metal, but it became more common over the weeks, though it was still sporadic. I'd even had my car taken into the shop to be inspected. Besides needing an oil change and one of my back taillights having been damaged, the mechanic told me my car was in perfect condition. But now it was clockwork, like an alarm clock I'd wake up to the sound. I breathed a sigh as I got ready for work. Hopping into my car, I flipped on the radio. Some new song that had been playing on a loop for the past week and a half spun up and I grumbled at the annoying pop tune, switching to another station. Classical music started playing. I wasn't one to usually go for classical. I was personally more of an R&B guy, call me a romantic, but the melody did have a calming effect. I moved my head to the rhythm, letting the string instruments take me away on a journey, away from the stresses of the previous weeks. Music really was a type of magic. The drums thumped along, complementing the overall tune. The trumpets and trombones blasted their sounds. It was exquisite. Maybe I could get into classical, I thought. Then the rhythm changed. The string instruments came out of sync, and the drums picked up their pace. Even as someone who wasn't familiar with the genre, I could tell it wasn't quite the right tempo. The trumpets let out a long, sustained blast, the trumpeters holding the note for what felt like minutes on end. I looked at the radio, taking a hand off the steering wheel. I reached for the dial and I changed the station, but the cacophony of noise continued. I tried to turn it down. I could see the volume indicator drop to zero, but the noise actually got louder. Then I heard it. Behind the trumpets, drums, harps, and cymbals, I heard the chains. They rattled along to their own unsynchronized tune. I stabbed at my radio frantically and prayed for the noise to end. The noise of the chains almost sounded like a metallic laugh mocking my attempt. A loud horn blasted over the speakers, louder even than the chain. Then I realized that it wasn't a horn on the radio. I swerved as I blasted through the intersection, nearly missing a minivan. I sped past a woman leaning out of the driver's side window, cursing at me, her child in the back looking at me from his booster seat. I white-knuckled the steering wheel, breathing hard and feeling lightheaded at the sudden rise of my pulse. The radio went silent, one instrument after the other cutting out, the last sound over the radio being the mocking faux laughter of the chains. I pulled into my work parking lot, parked my car and went into the building. Fixing my tie and wiping the sweat from my brows, I walked through the lobby. Oh, hi, Ezekiel. Janice, the kindly middle-aged secretary, said from behind her desk. She was the only person at the office to call me by my full name, but it was in a motherly way. Are you okay, sweetie? You look a little flushed, she said, concern covering her plump face. Oh, I'm doing fine, Janice. Just a wild ride here. People can be pretty crazy on the road, I said, getting my breathing under control. Oh, don't I know it. You know, Harry and I almost got into a car accident on our first date. Crazy person blasting through the intersection. I swear it was like he had no concern for his life. Gave me quite the fright, but my Harry calmed me right down. That's when I knew he was the one. She said the last bit and I could see that she was reliving the memory of her and her recently passed husband. 
a mix of sadness at her loss and happiness for what she'd had flashing through her rosy cheeks. From the brief moments I met Harry, he seemed like a great guy. Remember, if you ever need to talk, I'm here for you, I said, and I really did mean it. I'd only met Harry about three or four times when he'd come to pick up Janice, and he was a great guy from what I'd seen, and Janice was like the company mother, there for anyone if they needed to talk. It was only fair that I did the same, though my current situation was one that I kept to myself. Oh, that's fine, darling, but thanks. You run along now, I don't want you being late. I gave Janice a smile and a wave and went into the elevator. I rode the elevator up, the mediocre music giving me flashbacks to my incident on the drive here. Thankfully, I made it through without any issue. I walked into my office, sat at my desk, and began my work. The hours slipped by seamlessly as I clicked away at my keyboard. Going into the zone was easy as I worked, and it was something to take my mind off of the chains. I was interrupted just as I was about to send an email as I heard the door to my office open and my name be called out. Zeke, my man, you trying to get lunch with Marty and me? In the door stood Jackson, tailored press suit fitting snugly to his form and a money-making smile plastered on his face. I checked the time and was stunned to see how many hours had passed. The grumble in my stomach that I just started to feel letting me know that time really had flown by. Yeah, I can eat, I said, sending the email and collecting the few things I needed. Great, let's go. I can really go for one of those sandwiches the coffee shop makes. In minutes, Marty, Jackson, and I were walking down the street to the coffee shop. The three of us froze as we walked inside, the line that stretched from the counter to the back of the store stupefying us. I could see the girl behind the counter with her apron on, moving as fast as she could to keep up with the onslaught of customers. I know this place really pulls in a crowd, but this is ridiculous, Jackson said in exasperation. I know, right? Why haven't they hired a new girl yet? What are they waiting for? The last one isn't coming back, Marty said in an agitated tone. Come on, man. I really don't feel like waiting on this line. Let's just go somewhere else, I offered. Yeah, let's go. There's a burger spot down the road anyway, Jackson said in a defeated tone, seeming like his day had been ruined since he hadn't gotten the sandwich that he wanted. We walked down the street to the burger spot and in minutes we were sat, burgers in front of us as we chowed down. Man, this is good. This should be a new spot, Marty said with a satisfied sigh. I don't know, Jackson began. It's just not the same as the sandwiches at the coffee place. Yeah, you say that, but I've seen pigs eat with more restraint than you have with that burger, I said. Hey, I didn't say it was bad. It's just not the same, though, Jackson said, taking another massive bite. I laughed and took my own huge bite of my burger. It was really good. I stopped there when I felt my teeth hit something and I felt a crack and a shot of pain rip through my mouth. I spat out the chunk of burger holding my hand over my mouth. I heard a thunk as the burger hit the table. My mouth was bleeding, saliva and blood pooling behind the hand I had over my mouth, some of it seeping through my fingers. I looked down at the table where my discarded bit of burger had fallen. In horror, my eyes widened. A mix of blood and saliva fell from my mouth and onto my shirt as I moved my hand and picked up the heavy silver chain link that was in between my food. I looked at it in stunned horror, the metal zero-shaped object looking back up at me like a steel-plated eye. My mouth continued to bleed and I could feel the piece of chipped tooth running around in my tongue as I held up the piece of metal in disbelief. Hey Zeke, what's wrong? Jackson asked. I pulled my eyes from the single chain link and looked at my co-workers. Marty and Jackson stared at me, puzzled looks on both of their faces. I nearly screamed as I looked at them. They both held a line of chains in their hands like they were spare ribs. They bit down on the pieces, and I could hear their teeth shatter on the rough metal. They chewed away, looking at me as if I was the weird one. I faintly noticed as the rattling of chains began. Marty took another bite of his chain, and as he opened his mouth, pieces of metal and teeth fell to the table, striking his plate, making a sound like coins hitting glass. I stood from the table, the chair falling back and hitting the floor, heart rate skyrocketing, my own bleeding pain mouth forgotten. Other patrons looked at me quizzically at the sudden noise. My head swiveled around the room looking back at the other people. They all had bleeding mouths, pieces of chains clutched in their hands. A little boy with blood running from his mouth tapped his father on the shoulder and pointed at me, laughing at my display. I rushed out of the restaurant, sweat beating down my face with a panic attack building up inside me as the rattling of the chains only got louder. 
As I pushed the door open and I ran out into the open air, I ran into another person just as they were reaching for the door. I stumbled, falling off to the side as my panicked mind and unbalanced steps made me fall onto my back. A large man looked down at me, unmoved at my having run into him. Weirdo, he said in a gruff, annoyed voice. I sat there on the ground panting, as Jackson and Marty made their way out of the door, both of them having to wait for the bulky man to enter first. They stooped down next to me, I looked at their mouths as they spoke. There was no blood, and their teeth were back to the sparkling white they had always been. Hey, Zeke. I flinched at the sound of my own name, still trying to come back to reality. You alright, man? Marty asked. Come on, help me get him up, Jackson said as he grabbed one of my arms. Marty followed suit, grabbing the other and hoisted me to my feet. What was that? Jackson asked, concern etched on his face. I... I stammered. I just had a crazy daydream. I, I think more of a nightmare, actually. <laughs> I laughed awkwardly. You gotta stop taking those long hours, man. Marty said, helping me dust my shirt off. Yeah, you're probably right. I looked over their shoulders and back into the restaurant. Most of the patrons were still looking out of the windows at us, but some of them had gone back to eating already. My freak out was apparently not the craziest thing they'd already seen. All of them were back to normal though. Burgers and fries in hand, munching away with no blood and no broken teeth. I think you should just call it quits for the day and go home early, Jackson said. I think you're probably right. I was still shaken up and I could still hear the faint sound of the chains and I was still embarrassed at having lost in front of those people. I just wanted to go home and sleep. Marty paid for the meal as Jackson waited outside with me. I could catch the concerned looks he gave me out of the corner of his eye. In a few minutes we were back to work. I told my boss that I needed to leave early, and he was more than happy to oblige, my exemplary record giving him no reason to question as to why. I waved goodbye to Marty and Jackson and a few other co-workers and gave Janice a vague answer as to why I was leaving early when she asked, and was out the door and on the road in minutes. The ride home was uneventful, thankfully, and as I pulled into my driveway and made my way inside I practically collapsed as I made it to my bedroom. My head hit the pillow and I was out in seconds. I opened my eyes a few hours later. My room was dark, my open window only letting in the dim light of the moon, and I knew my sleep schedule would suffer from my midday nap. I tossed and turned for 15 minutes trying and failing to attain sleep again, but it eluded me, like a dog trying to catch its tail. I gave up and went downstairs to get something to eat, my mind still in the events of the burger joint. Pouring the milk into my bowl and grabbing my favorite cereal, I took a seat at my table. It was arduous to make my way through the meal. Every time I took up another spoonful, I couldn't help but take a second to inspect it, just to make sure that there weren't any errant pieces of chain in my spoon waiting to smash my teeth. I nearly had a heart attack when my teeth scraped against my spoon, and I ended up spitting the contents out onto the table and knocking over the bowl. I spent the next minute feeling like a fool as I cleaned up the sugary mess. Though I couldn't fall asleep, fatigue weighed on me heavily, stress and anxiety plaguing my weary mind. Just the thought of another incident with the chains threatened to send me into a spiral. The maddening sound they made, the cold rigidity, I couldn't take it. And the fact that I knew another incident waited for me just made it that much worse. I moved from the table, mess finally cleaned, and I walked to the living room. I needed to take my mind off of things. As I walked past my basement steps, I heard them again. The chains, just at the bottom of the stairs. It sounded like a heavy ball of chains were being dragged across the floor down there. I stood frozen looking at the door, too afraid to open it. Then I heard the stairs creak. A heavy mass of chains landing at the bottom step. I stumbled back from the sound. This isn't real. I said in a shaky voice trying to calm myself. Up another step and the sound of the chains was loud as the thumping of my heart in my chest. I scrambled up from the floor and ran to the living room. I clapped my hands over my ears, chanting my newfound mantra. This isn't real. This isn't real. This isn't real. I sat down in front of the TV, sinking into my leather couch. I could hear it squelch as my now sweat-drenched body settled into it. Grabbing the remote like it owed me money, I stabbed madly at the buttons. The news came on. The last channel I'd had it on, and I cranked the volume to the max. A single male news reporter spoke. He sat behind a desk, his lower half concealed. His hair was perfectly combed and his suit was nice. I forced myself to focus on him, trying to pull my attention away from the almost deafening sound of the chains coming from the basement. 
Well, folks, it seemed Mrs. Bridges' cat was in her house all along. Now, just after these short messages, we'll be right back as the search continues. Static flickered across the TV, cutting off the reporter mid-sentence. Then the image came back. We'll be right back. The man sat silent, and it was those few seconds of dead air right before a commercial break. But the seconds continued on. I sat in my now moist couch, staring at the reporter as he gazed into the camera, seemingly frozen. It was awkward, just him looking at me, but the awkwardness quickly turned unnerving as half a minute went by, and he still stared into the camera, as if looking at me. His wide, porcelain smile spread across his face. I couldn't move. My nerves were screaming at me. Sweat ran down my brow in heavy rivulets. I tried to look away, trying to pull my eyes from the smiling man. His eyes followed mine. My heart sank. He was watching me. My heart leapt into my throat when he suddenly spoke. In other news, we'll be expecting heavy thrashing of steel chains for the foreseeable future. He still spoke in the happy tone news reporters speak in. A smile still plastered on his face. You will never know a moment's peace, Helzik. If you thought that was bad before, it's just getting started. He punctuated the words one at a time, cold fear rolling up my spine. It was so strong my teeth started to chatter. Then I felt it. Cold steel slapped around my wrist. I looked down to see a line of chain had ripped itself out of the couch and wound itself around my wrist. I screamed. I hadn't even heard the chains or felt them until now. I tried to stand, but more chains leapt out of the couch, tearing the leather into ragged pieces, coiling around my midsection and legs. Now where do you think you're going, Zeke? Your night is just getting started. His chipper tone was horrifying, and I wailed in agony as the chains pulled me back into the couch, wrapping tighter around my wrist, stomach, and legs. I grit my teeth as the chains wound themselves tighter and tighter. Over the sound of the buzzing chains in my ears, I could hear my ribs creaking from the pressure. Now that you're all snug and comfortable, the fun can begin. Get ready, Zeke. The reporter said. Then he took off his suit coat and the shirt that was underneath, leaving him bare-chested. Eyes wide, I watched as his skin started to ripple and stretch. He stood from behind the desk and the camera panned to follow him. Then it tracked him as he moved around the table to stand fully in frame. The reporter twitched and jerked as his skin changed the color from the writhing mass that was underneath it. Tears ran freely from my eyes as I watched the horror unfold in front of me. Still smiling, the reporter's skin finally tore with a terrible ripping sound. His stomach opened up, and from the cavity, loops of heavy chain fell to the ground like intestine. They hit the ground, blood soaked and clanging. It seemed to never end as the pile of chains grew larger and larger. Actual organs were pulled free from their places they were dragged out, tangled into the falling chains. They were crushed and mangled as the chains fell atop them. All the while, the reporter just stood there, sanguine smile across his face, his arms outstretched at his sides like a pastor presenting his words to his congregation. Then the outpouring of metal finally came to an end. A pile of chains that came up to the reporter's knees lay at his feet, bloody and filled with bits of gore. He looked at me, my wide eyes unable to do anything but meet his and watch the display in front of me. Now for the main event. He walked into the pile of chains and stood, arms still outstretched. Then for the first time, he finally took his eyes off me and looked upward. As he did, the pile of chains started to climb his legs, slowly spiraling up, but consistently picking up speed. Before I knew it, from head to toe the reporter was covered in the loose, bloody chains. But it wasn't over. With my heart beat hammering in my ears, I watched as he started walking towards the camera, and the chains started to tighten around his body. Five steps from the camera, the chains were snug against his skin. Four steps from the camera, and his skin was a deep purple ready to pop. Three steps from the camera, and I could see the massive red blood vessels in his eyes from between the chains as his head was squeezed. Two steps, and the skin in his arms tore open, flesh being pulled apart like wet tissue paper. One step away and I watched as his arm snapped from the force of the tight chains. But what was worse was when he reached for the camera and my TV started to ripple. Out from the TV came a bloody chain wrapped hand. Using the frame the reporter pulled himself through, 
from the studio into my house. I thrashed at my binding, screaming bloody murderous demands torso made his way into my abode. Through the tight chain his eye watched me thrashing, pulling at my binds, tearing my own skin open from the cold steel. With a heavy thud his chain wrapped feet planted themselves on my hardwood floor. The pain in my arms, legs, and chest was extreme as I tried and failed to free myself from my bonds to get away to escape from this thing. He shambled towards me, his arms broken from the chains wrapped around him. In heartbeats he was before me, looking down at me, his bloodshot eyes stabbing into my panicked one. Ezekiel, this is only the beginning. He said, his chipper tone was gone and in its place was a heavy wheezing thing. It echoed in my ears like the buzzing of the chains, pushing my mind ever closer to snapping. I was somehow able to speak, but the words were sloppy and coated in fear. Why are you doing this to me? Through the chains I watched as the man molded his already warped face into a horrid version of a smile. Broken teeth fell from his mouth, and I could see the chains had broken his jaw, but it didn't stop him from letting out a terrifying laugh. <laughs> Then he raised one chain-wrapped, mangled hand and brought it down on the side of my head. Light flashed behind my eyes and before I could know what was happening, darkness was on its heels to take me. Over the weeks, the reporter's words came true. It was only the beginning. I could hear the chains everywhere I went. There was no silence anymore and any music I played was drowned out by the heavy clanging of metal. I couldn't speak to Janice. One day I came in from work only to find her hanging from the ceiling like a marionette, with arms and legs having heavy chains tied to them. Her body was covered in purple bruises like she had been beaten, and blood seeped from her eyes. The worst thing about it was that she spoke as if everything was normal. She would greet me and try to talk to me, all the while she hung from the ceiling like a corpse. Her puffy purple skin stretched when she would give me one of her trademark rosy smiles. I finally resolved that it wasn't real. It couldn't be real. But each day she would be like that, and each day her body would go through another stage of decay, slowly rotting away. All the while she tried to talk to me as if everything was normal. Similar things happened with Marty and Jackson, though it was more subtle. Every time I spoke to them I could see the ripple of chains under their skin, crawling up their necks, slinking over their jaws. It was a constant threat that the same thing that had happened to the reporter would happen to my friends. And speaking of the reporter, he was now a new friend. Out of the corner of my eye I could see him, over my shoulder I could feel him watching me. I'd find his bloody footprints around my house. Most days I'd wake up to see him watching me at the foot of my bed, only disappearing when my groggy mind actually processed what I was seeing. It never ended. My torment was constant. But as he'd also said, my pain was exquisite. Every bit of food had a piece of metal in it. Every bite, every nibble, and each morsel. My teeth would crack and chip, only to be back to normal when I reached to inspect them. Some nights I would be awakened from my sleep as my body was flogged, fighting my way out of my sheets as heavy chains slammed against my body, breaking bone and tearing skin. Then I would find my body was spotless. The only evidence something having been done was the sound of the reporter's dim laugh over the sound of the chains clanging. Weeks went by and my mind and body were almost completely gone. I hardly ate, only enduring the pain when the hunger became too great. I stopped going to work. Seeing my co-workers in the state that they were in made it impossible to get anything done. I hadn't left the house for days. I hardly slept from the fear of being flogged or waking up to see the man at the foot of my bed. 
I didn't recognize myself in the mirror. My mind was a fog of fear, pain, and the buzzing of clanging chains, and it came to the point that I couldn't take it anymore. I stood at the top of the basement steps, looking down into the darkness. I could hear the chains dragging across the hard floor of the basement. The light switch sat at my right, and my hand hovered near it, too afraid to flip it on. My emaciated hand shook, the lack of sun and food making my skin a sickly color. I flipped on the light, and against the walls like mold, writhing chains spread out, creeping across the surface. They twitched from the sudden light and I could see a ripple run through them. I took a step back. Now seeing what awaited me at the bottom, a new fear gripped me. I reached a weak hand to grab the door to close it. Then I felt it. A chain wrapped hand in the center of my back as it gave me a strong shove. I fell forward down the stairs, screaming all the way down the short fall. I landed with a thud and a snap as I tried to stop myself. My arm snapped and a lightning bolt of pain shot through me. I curled into a ball, tears of pain, fear, and regret running down my face. This is it, you You're running now. I looked at the top of the stairs and the bloody reporter stood there looking down at me with his bloodshot eye. I watched in horror as he closed the door with a heavy slam. I started to hyperventilate as I struggled to my knees, cradling my ruined arm. I knew what was down here. The chains on the walls almost seemed to hiss as I slowly walked through the basement, like a heartbeat, ripples coursed through them like waves on water. I made my way through the basement, moving past old items I didn't use anymore and frivolous junk my salary afforded me. Then, there she was. She was beautiful, once. Long, dark hair hung in front of her face skin that was once smooth and spotless, but was now dry and bruised. I could see the deep purple on her skin. She still wore the apron for the coffee shop she once worked at. Arms above her head at her sides, like a pastor presenting a sermon to his congregation. Holding her arms, heavy chains, locked tight around her wrists. I could see that her skin was torn and bruised from where she had tried to force her way out of the restraints. I walked over to her and fell at her feet. Three things waited for me. Chipped and broken teeth lay on the ground, bloody and ruined. And next to them lay the weapon that had done it. The length of chain rusty and coated in her blood. It lay at her feet. The third thing was something that hadn't been there. It was a symbol of some kind I had never seen before. She had scrawled it into the floor with her own blood, using her feet. It hurt to look at. It made my eyes fuzzy. Pulling my eyes from the mark, I looked up at her. Tears in my eyes. I knew why this was happening to me. Surrounded by her long, dark hair on all sides, her lifeless eyes looked down at me, judging me and finding me wanting. I'm I'm sorry, I cried. Please make it stop. You were just... I don't know why I did it. You were just so pretty. Please just make it stop. The buzzing of the chains picked up at my words. I clasped my hands together, my broken arms screaming, and I pleaded with her. I could hear the chains getting closer. Around her, I could see where the blood splattered the walls from her last moments. I just wanted you to love me. Please forgive me. Please. The light in the basement flickered and her cracked lips moved into a slight smile. Her lifeless eyes looking into my very soul. And from behind me, as I curled into a ball, my tears stinging my eyes, knowing my suffering would never end, I heard in a cacophony of voices, Your torment will be sweet. Your agony exquisite.
It has been a minute, and by a minute I mean two years. <laughs> two years since I've uploaded onto this channel, but before I get into any of that, if you've made it this far into the video, I want to give a sincere thank you, and I hope that you enjoyed the story. And I want to give another thank you to the people that have stuck around. Whether that is you forgot to unsubscribe <laughs> since I haven't been uploading or anything, or if you just it didn't do it, but like, I still want to say thank you to people that are still here. Um, somehow the channel has kind of grown since I've been gone. It's not been a lot. I'm still not past like I'm still not like crazy big, but like still, some people are still here. Some people subscribe. Some people unsubscribe. It's to be ex expected. But like, if this seems rambly, I don't have a script for this or anything. I'm just going off the top of the dome. I've tried to re have I, though I have like kind of re-recorded this a couple of times because I just kept rambling like I'm doing right now. Anyway, let me get into the important stuff. I'm thinking about rebranding my channel. I'm I'm gonna ex I want to expand more, not just do stories, because if I uh, I write all the stories myself, it's not just that I don't want to upload other people's. It's not just I want to I don't want to upload other people's stories. It's that um I want to be an author. Like I want to actually write a book and stuff i've had it in my twitter handle since i've created my twitter and i want to write my own stories i want to get better at writing that's what this channel is it's me practicing i know I'll, i don't consider my story to be good or like great or good but that's what the practice is for so i want to keep i want to keep uploading these stories here get better and eventually write my own full-length novel or series of books so that's what I want this channel for. But in but in doing that, I still want to expand my channel. I want to upload other things. So I'm thinking about doing some gaming videos on this channel. I have a couple of those already recorded. I need to do more. It's going to be horror related. This channel is probably always going to be horror related. Maybe. But yeah, I'm going to expand the channel. And with that expansion, I want to change the name. Um, it might, I might still have Onyx in there somewhere. But... When I actually start writing, I want to have a pen name that is an Onyx the Madman. So, I'm going to be going as Apollo Smith. That's what the ch name of the channel will probably shift to. So, if any of you guys stuck around and see, like, Apollo Smith in your subscriptions, it's probably going to be me. So, yeah. Cup Name change. Different videos. Hopefully, I'll be more consistent. Because writing takes a lot of effort, and I get burned out way too easy so the whole writing recording editing that really takes it out of me for some re like i don't know i don't feel like i have that drive a lot of big youtubers have and i'm trying to get that drive to like just keep going at it going at it going at it but like it as i it just i just burn up way too fast i don't know why and i'm trying to juggle like work and stuff too I could give the whole, oh, Corona really did a lot to me, but like, no, nah, I was, I was being lazy. I'm gonna be honest with you. I could have put in the effort. I had those, like those years I could have just put in the effort and really grind out being a, doing YouTube, but I didn't. I let those opportunities slip me by, let, slip by. So now I'm here. I'm come. I have a couple other videos, uh, stories I want to do. I'm not just going to be doing stories, like I said. So hopefully uh, my upload schedule will be more consistent since I'm expanding what I'm doing on this channel. So yeah, I think I said everything I wanted to say. If I didn't, I'll put it in after I'm done saying this part, or I might just edit it in, I don't know. Or I could just put something on screen. So yeah, if you stuck around, thank you. If you're new, subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching till this part. This is a 34 minute video plus, like a 34 plus minute video. So. And I know people's attention spans nowadays are hella short. So anyway, I want to say thank you for everyone that stuck around. If you even skimmed it, you might have just skipped some, ahead some parts. I just want to say thank you. 
Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for being here. And I appreciate it a lot. Until the next video, goodbye.